look what I did. I did this. I digitized this. It's not very well. But this is something. This is a Houston thing. And that's the Houston skyline. Again, it's not perfect. But this is something that anybody that's from Houston know what it means. Um, it's something that was written in the freeway for many years. And then they kept taking it off. And they put kept putting it on. And then... Uh, um, anyways, it's something that everybody knows. It's known here, and I'm making Liam a um, custom jean jacket, which I have the jean jacket, so I want to put a bunch of patches on the jacket. And I ended up digitizing that with the chroma. Okay, guys, really quick, I want to show you how I auto digitize that because my computer did not record the windows that pop up. So you go to that little A, you click browse, you look for the file, the picture that you already should have saved in your computer. I have it right here. I just found it off Google. Open that up, go to next. And right here, I am going to resize the image, how big I wanted to digitize it. So this is about four inches, 101.6, and then I go next. And then it's, gonna, it's going to ask you what colors is it digitizing. So I'm only digitizing the blue because there's so many shading on the back of this. So I am going to just digitize the blue and then go finish. And then here it is. This is how it auto digitized it by itself. And then if you click off and then click the image again, it'll show you right here the type of stitching that it automatically gave it and the density. Okay, so here's how I did the font. You want to click this little feature right here. And I'm showing you in the corner that if you make a box or a square and then you right click your mouse, it'll instantly make stitches inside that box you made. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to trace the font step um, corner by corner until I create the letter. So right here, I'm going to show you how I'm about to do that. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect because this font was literally graffiti that was written on the freeway. So it's not obviously it's not a perfect font. Um, so right here, I am going to trace inside the circle of the letter B. And then after that, I literally just cut from there to the corner. And then start tracing that letter B. Um, I go, you can go point by point if you want. Just make sure that you go a little bit outside of the edge so that you don't leave any gaps in between the stitching on the background and the stitching that's gonna go on top of that. Otherwise, you're gonna be you're gonna see spaces in there. I'm not a digitizer, I don't know the first thing about digitizing, but this ended up working well for me rather than pay someone you know an arm and a leg to digitize this for me and again because this is graffiti wow and 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 on the freeway it doesn't have to be perfect but i thought maybe this is helpful for someone who is trying to digitize something simple i have done this with logos that are super simple to digitize that are just straight lines or that it is not super complex so it 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 works so you just want to go ahead and trace and when you have are done tracing from one point to the other point to your end point you just click your you right click your mouse and it'll create stitches inside your um, square or figure that you made. And then from there, you can choose what kind of stitching you want. So automatically right here, it's giving me the tatami stitches. But you can go ahead and change that right here. I'm going to drag out the letter E. So you see how, how there it digitized it. And right here on the corner, I'm showing you the density. Again, you can change it if you want. It automatically gave it that density that it's showing you. You can play with it. Um, or you could change the stitches from tatami to satin or whatever type of stitches you want. Right there, I changed it to satin, as you can see. And 
honestly i think it looks better the way that it automatically gave me the tatami one so i'm going to change it back and then just press apply and it goes back to that so i'm just going to show you these two letters i think you get the the, the idea with the letter b i only did one circle um but you saw how i did that so pretty self-explanatory it works for a lot of designs and you know i am grateful for the digitizers and i still pay for their services but when there are very simple designs i just throw them on chroma and it works it works you save money chroma comes with every embroidery machine that you purchase so yeah take advantage of that tool if you did purchase your recoma with your embroidery machine with Recoma because you have that program take advantage of it it's great um and yeah that's how I did that and the skyline I just used that feature that I showed you in the beginning you just throw it on there and it automatically just digitizes it for you again it doesn't work with every single design there are very difficult designs that it will try to digitize them but they don't come out good so you have to go in with all these little tools that you see on the left side but um i i i don't know i don't know a lot about digitizing again so i hope this helps someone somewhere somehow that's how i did it so i'm gonna be using the recoma should i use this one or should i use the other one do i have uh ugh, i don't have orange on this one i wanted to use orange but it's okay i can swap the colors i was i was gonna use this one because it has both the colors that i want but i have this one set up to the frame to the larger frame so because i usually do hoodies on that one and then i do birthday shirts on this one and birthday shirts on this one but i'm just gonna use this one because i don't want to i don't feel like moving the framing around that one so also i wanted to say all you guys that have ordered embroidery machines with my link which is down below if anybody is interested I want to say thank you um that you have no obligation you are free to not use my link if you don't want to but if you do use it they do give you a hundred dollars off if you use my link that's more than that's more than half than of your first payment if you are financing so just throwing that out there again you don't have to use it but for those of you that have purchased it um big big thank you you guys helped me out okay so it should be my last design there it is i'm gonna send it to the embroidery machine memory here's the embroidery machine memory it should be the last one there it is okay and then it's gonna ask me right here i go to the thread combs to pick my color which i'm gonna change this one to orange or i'm just gonna leave it red i'm just gonna do a test stitch see see how well it digitized that so i'm gonna pick four number four that's my th that number the color of the number of the red thread jesus okay and then i know that the second step is the letter so i'm gonna go with black and there's only two steps i'm gonna leave it at aa because i don't need the machine to stop and then i'm gonna go to okay and then i'm gonna lock that in i have my needle one selected right here so wherever this lands on the embroidery hoop that's where it's gonna embroider around okay so here's where it's going to embroider you can do a trace which is right here you press trace and then it'll trace out which i already did that off camera i'll show you again so this is exactly where it's going to embroider you always want to make sure that your design is not too close to the edge or anything like that because your needle your pressure foot coming down and if you hit your frame you can break your machine always make sure that it fits inside the hoop you're not too close to the edges by printing the design out you can see like when i have to do new new designs that are quite like big i just make sure that at least the first time that i'm going to stitch this out that i print it and there's a little cross you can't see it it's right in his hair um i just make sure that it's right at the center and that it's not gonna get close to the edges or anything like that just to be extra safe you only do that in the beginning when you're scared and then you grab you get your confidence with the machine and you don't need to do that anymore but um just i like to say it every single video because 
it's such a shame if somebody spends a lot of money on these machines and then ends up breaking them for you know whatever reason so i always say it in every video that when you're beginning when you're beginner when you're starting out print out your design just so you could get a feel of what your machine can fit in the hoops and then after that you don't need to do that anymore but you know just just do it <laughs> in the beginning at least so again i am not a digitizer i don't know the first thing about digitizing i'm just trying this out see how well it does with the auto digitizing feature on the chroma um sometimes i can get away with it sometimes i cannot some designs are super difficult and i again i'm not a digitizer i don't know the first thing about digitizing but again sometimes i can get away with it so we'll see how this comes out i'm gonna step off camera i'm gonna start some cooking because i need to cook for the kids the kids are home we're on summer i mean spring break so i'm gonna step off for a little bit and we'll be back to how this stitches out okay i am shaking in see how this is coming along so far it looks good we won't know until i take it out of the machine but so far um it looks good for the purpose that i need it for uh i'll show you guys back when it's done okay so here is one of the patches that i want to add to the jacket and then it's this one that I am embroidering out. Let's see how that turns out. And then this is the other one that I want. That'll be that big. And that will go on the back of the jacket. And I'm not sure exactly where I'm putting all of them, but so far this is how I want it. I'm gonna go ahead and load the other machine. Um with this design and let's see how that stitches out i'm gonna use in the em 1010 while this one's working okay so this is how it came out with the auto digitizing on chroma um again i could have done better with the black uh letters i did those by myself this was auto digitized by the program which if you rewind a little bit back and see how i looked in the computer and how it looks on the actual stitched out it looks way better stitched out than it, than it did on the computer um because it's just like color that you see but um the letter stitched out good too the only thing is i don't think i made the width the correct size that's why you see white um so i'm gonna go back in there and fix that and then i'm gonna go ahead and stitch this out on a i'm not sure if do it on a royal blue because the colors for the astros has very deep blue orange and red so i want this to be orange and then or maybe i should do it on a red one mm, i don't know i'll see so that would be one patch i'm about to remember this patch and then i have another patch that says that we are the champions and then that one's gonna go the champions one i think i'm gonna put it in the back for him i think that will look good and then i'm thinking i'll put his name liam back here um and yeah so i'm gonna go into fast mode i'm gonna re-stitch that out fix the letters and then um just show you clips of the embroidery again i'm using the mt mt1501 uh em 1010 and there's links in the description if you guys want to check those out and chroma does come included with any embroidery machine that you purchase so um i'm gonna go ahead and do that okay here we go again there it goes it's stitching again this time i'm doing it on the hard felt i get this at hobby lobby people ask all the time it's hard felt it's not regular felt that's all flimsy this is like hard and stiff it works great for patches and then over here i am making the second patch this one's the one that says world series champions and then when this one's done i'm gonna make the little um green alien from the astros i don't know what i don't know if it's an alien or not but that's the mascot for the houston astros 
So I'm thinking this one's gonna go right here and then I don't know how I'm gonna decorate the rest, but uh, yep. It looks way better on the coat. And then for this one, I am I do have some of the candle thread over here. This is candle thread. It's super shiny. I have a link in the description if you guys want to try it. And then I have, I'm going to be using the metallic thread. Candle thread, if you're watching, you make some metallic thread so I can buy some. After this, I'm done with this metallic thread. I don't know where I'm going to go buy because I've tried buying before I run out. And it's not there anymore. Because I used to get it from Amazon. And it's not there anymore, so... I'm gonna have to look up uh, metallic thread. Much, much better. There it goes. It's sticking way better. We did it, guys. We did it. We did it. It's gonna look awesome. I'll show you when it's done. Also, I should say that you do not have to do them individually the way that I am doing them. I don't know why I didn't think of it, but you can totally use the bigger hoop that comes with the machines and you can put all of the designs in one file and embroider them all at the same time in one hoop. You could add the sash that comes with the machines or the larger hoops that come with the machines. I have done multiple patches in one hoop. Um... I, I don't know. I didn't I didn't really I didn't really know what I was doing honestly in the beginning. I didn't know what patches I was gonna put on the on the jacket and since I was uh did I digitized only two of these patches, the rest I did purchase. So don't think that uh, I digitized these. I definitely did not like this one right here. That one was purchased and I I didn't know what was going to go where, so I wanted to hurry up and start making them. So I did do them individually, but you can totally just get the largest hoop and put them all in one hoop and digitize them all at once rather than waiting for the machine to end like I did. But again, I didn't really know where I was going or what patches I, would, I was going to be using. And then this one I did end up putting it on the back of the jacket i didn't i don't know i thought it looked better at the bottom like if it was running towards the bottom all right so i'm gonna put liam's name i decided on this font and i'm gonna float it i'm gonna use the sticky spray um if you do use this make sure you're doing this outside it has really nasty stuff that you don't want to be breathing in um read the stuff in the back just don't do it inside just go spray it outside don't breathe it in um so i'm gonna go do that i'm gonna go outside and do that and i'll be right back and i changed my mind one more time and i decided to redo the skyline the way i'm doing it now with the colors of the astros in the back and it looks like a sunset so i liked it better so this is what i went for in the end Okay, so I remade this one and I think I like this one better because it has like the... What? You didn't want to shower! Okay, so I stitched this one with the Juki, so now I'm going to do this one. This one has a black outline, so I'm going to use black thread to just do the outline. I roughly do it. I don't go super detailed. And then this one, since it's on the sleeve, I think I'm going to do it by hand and then i don't know we'll see what other patches i keep adding to this
okay so here's what we got so far i did stitch this these in and i was able to use the juki on the sleeve because it's kind of up high um honestly like me personal preference i'm not a big fan of the name on the jackets just that's just me but he he most likely will end up taking this to school because we they do have like an astros theme day at school where you wear your astros gear so obviously <laughs> i would make him take this um so i did put the name because he loses every freaking jacket even though it's so obviously i would know that this would be his jacket but you know like people take stuff so i did put his name um probably could have went a little bit smaller but anyways i still want to do the front this one i had said i was going to put it in the front but i ended up putting it back here and then he has the be someone on this on the side and i'm still not done with patches i'm gonna make more patches and then i want to put the space city in the front and then i don't know what else i'm gonna put but this is so far how it's going um another thing um i did stitch these because i just uh, i don't want to use the heat and bond ultra hold which you can do you use your heat press and then you melt it onto the jacket you press it but in order for that to work it has to be extremely hot and you have to press it for a long period of time i don't want to create so much damage to the fabric to the jean jacket so i just stitched it i feel like it, it it's it's better off anyways um with the washing and all that stuff so i stitched it um you can see the stitches right there just use the same color thread i feel like it's more it's better it will hold up better um so let's see what how else what else i keep adding to it um and i'll be back with the finished product So here's the jacket so far i stitched those in i did the astronaut in the front and the space city on the other side of the sleeve and then that texas logo on the top i will add two more patches but so far for now this is it for the video guys i don't want it to be so long i'll show you in the next video how it turns out so i hope you guys like the video and i'll see you on the next one bye